bladder anxiety. How far can you drive without needing a Wii? Basically, batteries are getting bigger and efficiencies are getting better, but how big of a battery do you actually need? How far will your bladder last? I'm in an i8, which is obviously a FEV, so I don't need to charge. So let's see how far I can go without needing the toilet. <laughs> Now, I'm only, what, two minutes into my journey. Um, I do need to actually stop. I could probably have a wee if I wanted to, but I don't really need a wee. But I have to stop. Massive lesson. If you ever, ever, ever start YouTube, basic rules are always check your camera equipment's charged up and both batteries are charged, which I thought I did. Put the battery in this morning when I started filming and it's flat. So I've got one charged battery and one flat battery. So I'm gonna stop at work, pick up the charger for the camera, and then hope that Will Adams at DSG will let me charge the battery up. So I've arrived at DSG and I am bursting. I started to leave the toilet about Stockport, which was about 10, 15 miles in. I'm now 90 miles. Now to be fair, I've done motorway driving, um, 70 and a bit, uh, all the way down the motorway. So that gives you an indication that there's, there's, you don't really need that many miles in an EV. I've obviously not had to stop. I've obviously not had to charge. I'm going to purposely plug my car in Y at DSG because Craig's not here yet, and that means he can't charge when he gets here, and that's just funny. Now, I also talked to some other owners today about electric vehicles, and we all had a discussion regarding what size battery is appropriate. And I said I had a 100-mile bladder range, and a couple of people laughed and said, oh, you it's because you're young. Mine's less than that. So as we get faster chargers, larger batteries are going to seem less irrelevant, I think. I think an ideal battery range for most EVs is going to be 150 to 200 miles once we get to sort of 8 to 10 minute charging because that's a quick run in the shop, have a wee and run back out. Currently it takes me about half an hour to run in the shop, uh, come back out. By the time you've queued for a coffee at Costa, You've, uh, you've taken half an hour to have a wee and go in Costa and come out with a coffee. And that is the thing, it's gonna be about speed and it's gonna be about battery range, but there's a playoff between the two. And my main concern, which a couple of other people discussed with me is, it's all right having a 300 mile battery range, but if you're only doing an average 20 miles a day, you're carrying extra weight that you don't need to carry. Unless you're regularly, regular doing 300 mile trips, you don't need a 300 mile battery. 150, 200 miles is fine. Now, 300 miles could be very convenient if you don't want to charge very often, or you've not got a home charger, like some people, and you just need to charge occasionally, and you have, with, without the ability of having home chargers, but for the majority of people, 150, 200 miles, even 80 miles of the Zoe, it's more than adequate. Personally, I don't really need more than a car, an EV that does 30 miles because I only do 10 a day. So I'm just carrying extra weight I don't need. I know today's video has not been about the hybrid today or fuel, but I thought I should mention the elephant in the room. This i8 has cost today to do the Morecambe trick and back with a full charge leaving and a partial charge at DSG just to wind uh, Craig up, it's cost over £20 worth of fuel. Thanks for watching this week's video. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out my other videos and consider becoming a Patreon. Thanks very much and I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.